Hello, everyone. I'm Kelly Thompson. I'm a women's leadership coach. Welcome to Career Clarity and Confidence Live. We today are talking about how to cut through the noise and be heard at work. And actually, we're talking about even a more simple topic that I think is harder than we give it credit for, and that is clarity. I think sometimes we underestimate how hard it is to be clear. Like if you've ever, I, I spent a good chunk of my career in training and in marketing, and they were always telling us to simplify things, simplify things, simplify things so that like a third grader can understand and give me a harder like if um, you ever had to do this. But sometimes being clear and simplifying things is hard work because it's like easy to make things complicated and <laughs> tell me where you disagree. But I think sometimes the reason why we like to keep things complicated is because sometimes it allows us to hide behind a little bit of ambiguity, right? Like when you're really clear about what's expected, what you want, what you need, all of a sudden there's like an accountability element and that accountability can feel kind of scary um, because either you're on the hook because you've told someone what you want or what to expect, or it could be that you're, you're holding someone else accountable. And so, you know what, that just takes a lot of confidence and courage. And so I want to share three tips on how to cut through the noise at work and be heard, not only, not only for your career goals, so that you can accomplish what you want. But I think this really helps reduce some of the conflict that comes um, in teams when there's, you know, quite frankly, a lot of ambiguity. I always say that ambiguity creates animosity. I think sometimes we think that like people should just know. And we think that people just kind of know what we want or know what to expect. And that creates a lot of chaos. So anyways, I want to, I, I um, have a story from a client that I want to tell because I think um, this highlights how important it is to be clear on who you are, what you want, and the value that you bring, because you never know when like a serendipitous moment is going to come for you. Okay, so I have a, a client who has some pretty lofty career goals. And when we first started working together, this was, oh gosh, maybe over a year ago, um, we had our zoom meeting, you know, she's, she, I work with her one-on-one -on -one and, you know, I asked her, okay, so talk to me about what your career goal is. And she's like, you know what, Kelly, I want to be, um, a, a chief, um, customer experience officer. She wanted to be like in the marketing product customer experience role. And I said, okay, well, who, who have you told about this? And she's like, um, no one. And I just want you to know how common that is. And again, give me a, a like, give me, give me a heart, whatever. Has that ever happened to you where you have like this goal? Maybe it's a career goal that's like in your head, but when it really comes down to it, you can out yourself now because I know I've done that. Like, let me know. Have you ever just like not told anybody? And when I mean not told anybody, I'm not talking about like hinting around, but like, have you actually ever gone to your, um, you know, the people in your network, um, the leaders at work, who are, whomever you're working with, and actually said, my goal is to be X. I have another client who I encourage to do the same thing. You know, she um, wanted to lead um, innovation at her firm. And I'm like, well, who have you told? And she's like, you? And I'm like, well, that's great, but all of our coaching is confidential, so it probably won't go anywhere. So I encourage you to be clear about what you want. So anyways, she, I encourage her to start telling people about what her career goal was. Because here's the thing, like when you start to tell people, like networks get activated, people know people, they start to put you in contact with people. And that's definitely one of the first things that I tell my clients when I work with them, when they have a career goal that they're working towards is I'm like, who have you told? And the answer is usually no one. And I'm like, that's your first assignment is to actually be clear and tell someone what your goal is because you would be shocked. In fact, let me ask you this, how many of y'all give me a like or a heart, have like something in your life today that there's no way you could have like retraced the steps on how you got it, but maybe because you had the right words at the right time or you told somebody about it, some sort of crazy network activation happened where now all of a sudden this thing is in your life. Like, I know that that's how it is for me. And I'll tell my story here in a second. So I worked with my client. We got clear on exactly what she wanted. We got clear on like what her unique talents were. So like what separates her from the crowd? Like what value does she bring as a leader? What's her leadership style? Getting, getting really clear on those things. Um, fast forward about nine months later, this, this happened just um, 
a couple of months ago. She was at a conference and she happened to get into a session with someone who directly works with this company and specifically this leader that she has admired for forever, like forever. And she's like, oh my gosh. She's like, this is like my, you know, you talk about like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. She's like, I'm one degree away, you know, from this person that I've always admired, that I've always wanted to work for. And, you know, the, uh, the, the theme of the session was all about like speaking up and taking a chance. And so she actually went up to this speaker and said, I got to be honest. She's like, I want to work with your partner. And the person said, and she's like, and he goes, oh, okay, well, what do you do? And she said, because of all of our work together, she could say in one sentence exactly what she did. She goes, I do this and this. And he's like, great. He's like, find me after this session. I'm going to get your email and get you in touch. Uh, she has an interview with this individual here. I think, uh, I think she told me it's next week. So I just want you to show the power of being clear on what you want, because you never know when you're going to be in that situation where somebody says, oh, great, I can connect you. What is it that you want to do? And how many of us have been in that situation where we're like, oh, uh, uh, like, <laughs> you, know, you, you start to fumble on your words and you don't know what to say and, and all these sorts of things. You know, um, I think sometimes we think that like to meet our career goals or to get where we want to go, all of this has to come through hustle. But I actually believe that there's a better way. And I think that there's a way that feels a lot easier and definitely makes it a lot easier on us to shorten the path to success that isn't about hustle. And I think it's clarity. So back in the pandemic, um, well, we're kind of still coming out of it. Um, when I first started my coaching practice, I used to do just kind of generic leadership coaching. I would coach both men and women. And when the pandemic hit, um, oh my gosh, I lost like 80% of my income in the course of a month because a lot of speaking engagements canceled. I had a lot of client contracts cancel as they were tightening up the belts and reducing things. And um, I just had to do all the things I had to do to survive, do all the government assistance, all those sorts of things. And, you know, I was kind of at the point where I thought to myself, well, if I can't lose any more money and my business can't go any more south, like what is it that I really want to do? And I thought to myself, you know, I really want to coach women. I really want to focus my coaching practice on helping women advance to the rooms where decisions are made. And, you know, I thought to myself, you know, maybe I just need to get clear about what that would look like. And so I just took really small steps towards being really clear in my social media content, in my newsletters, in my topics that I speak on that I was speaking to women. And what started to happen was, is, and, and I thought to myself, I was so nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, if I do this, if I go in and on women, I could alienate the, the last couple of clients that I feel like I have, you know, what if there's not a market for this? You know, there was all of those sorts of worries. What are people going to think? But what happened was really interesting is the clearer I got, the more my business grew because people actually knew how to come to me or what to work with me for. They knew what I stood for. And one of the things I've realized now, 18 months later, is the more clear I get, the more successful my business is because I'm clear on what I want, I'm clear on what I need, and I'm clear on who I serve. And all of that feels a lot easier than hustle. So how can you do this at work? Like, I want to give you three tips. And if y'all have questions for me, drop them in the comments, um, whether you're watching this live or you end up watching it on replay, I'm always happy to come back and answer the questions in the comments. So let me know what questions you have on being clear so that you can cut through the noise and be heard at work. Because I wanna share three tips with you that my clients use and that I know I personally use to use clarity, not hustle as my advantage at work. So the first, I think, tip for getting clear is sometimes you're like, well, I don't know what I want. Because see, there's lots of things that you can get clear on. You can get clear on a career goal. You can get clear on articulating your talents. You can get clear on an ask that you wanna make. Well, maybe you're not exactly sure what it is that you want as your goal or what your talents are that you want to advocate for, or you're not even like super clear on exactly what it is you want to ask for. So I always say step one, get clear on what you don't want. I think that that is a really good way to start fostering some clarity because typically when I ask myself or ask my clients, well, what do you want? They're like, I don't know, right? And sometimes when we're overwhelmed, I think that that's a really common normal response when we're feeling overwhelmed. But when I ask, well, what do you not want? They're like, oh, I can tell you what I don't want. 
And so I think step one, get clear on what you don't want, because that way, if it comes to you in that form, you can at least say, mm, I know I don't want that. Or I know my talents or how I want to spend my time is definitely not that. You know, what I value in my work or in the workplace is definitely not that. I'm definitely not asking for this. And that'll become really important here when I, when I get to step three. So step one, get clear on what you don't want. Okay. Step two is, and this might sound a little crazy. I want you to think like a plumber when you think about asking for things, because I see this all the time with my clients. And I think when I was new and I was really scared about promoting my business early on, cause I was like, Oh, this still feels weird. And I'm putting myself out there. I tended to hide behind a little ambiguity. Okay. So when I say think like a plumber, I want you to think about an ad that you might see from a plumber or any tradesperson. Like they are so crystal clear. Like when you think like a plumber, a plumber is like, Hey, you got a toilet or a drain that's clogged. That probably sucks, right? Because you probably don't use the bathroom you want to use. And now you're forced to walk across the house to use the far bathroom, right? And you're like rearranging your life. Well, I can come fix it. It's going to take two hours. It's going to be, you know, $299, whatever it is. They're very clear about what is the problem? What is the solution? And what is the price? Like there's no flowery language. Like I see this sometimes like on Amazon ads. Have you ever kind of like seen something like it looks like not the actual product, but it's kind of a picture of the product. And then you read the Amazon ad and it's like three pages of like fluff and colorful language. Like, I don't know about you, but I think sometimes we do that. Like we're so scared about maybe saying what we have to offer asking for the price, putting ourselves out there that we like tiptoe and dance around what we want. And at the end of the day, people are like, I think, I think, I think I'm going, I think this is what's coming in the mail, right? I'm not quite sure. I always kind of joke that there are a lot of coaches um, in the coaching industry who, who kind of sell this way. They have a lot of flowery language on their web pages when, you know, in fact, or in their, their newsletters, when in fact it would just be much easier an approach I've taken is just to talk like a plumber, ask like a plumber, here's the situation, here's what I'll come do. And like, here's how much it costs. And so in the workplace, I think it's just really important for us to say, okay, here's what, here, here's what I see as an issue, or here's the problem. Here's what's missing. Here's what I want, or here's what I can offer. And here's how much time it's going to take to do that. Or here's the raise that I think is commensurate with my experience. And so I really want you to think like a plumber there. They are very good because they do not overcomplicate marketing. And lots of times just being clear is being a good, clear marketer. Like, here's the problem. Here's what I want. Here's the time investment or here's the price, the, the salary that I think that, that we should put on that. Like, just don't overcomplicate it. I get, though, that this takes a ton of courage because you're really just being clear about what you want. And I know that this feels very vulnerable because when you put yourself out there and you you know, make an ask like this, it's like, oh, my gosh, well, what will people think? What if they say no? What if they disagree with what I'm asking for? What if I'm articulating a talent that I have that I want to use and they don't see things the same way? Again, re being clear. It sounds like it should be easy, but it's difficult because it requires a lot of vulnerability. Clarity requires courage and confidence because it is so easy to hide behind ambiguity. And so I know how much courage it can take to be clear, but I promise you that the clarity is worth it. I would rather have the courage to be clear about exactly what I want and what I'm doing than to try to hustle around it by being vague. That takes a, They both take a lot of energy. You just got to choose which energy you want to use. The third thing I think that is really helpful is to use contrasting statements. So this is kind of goes back to the first one I had you answer, which is this is what I don't want. So when you use contrasting statements, you're being clear about here's what I'm asking for, but here's what I'm not asking for. Like, here's the type of role I want, but I'm definitely not looking for this. And so you can articulate what you want by saying, hey, here's what I want or here's what I'm asking for, but here's what I'm not asking for. And it just adds that additional layer of clarity. Um, to whatever it is you're asking. And it could be things like, you know, I would love to be um, the project lead for a major initiative for the next major initiative, you know, coming up at work. But what I'm not asking for is a project that is just coordinating busy work or, or whatever that looks like for you. Hey, I would love to lead the next meeting 
that that does this, but what I'm not asking for is that. And so just using those contrasting statements can help you be even extra clear about what it is that you're asking for and what you're not asking for. So I just want to recap, like, how do you cut through the noise at work? I think this is really important because sometimes I know that there can be a level of fear there when it's like, oh, if I am really clear about sharing an idea or articulating what I want, you know, gosh, what are people going to think? What if somebody takes my idea and runs with it? Um, you know, you know, what if people don't agree with what I have to say? And I think what really happens is we're worried that we're going to have all this exposure and all this attention on us. But here's the thing. The real risk here is not exposure because people's inboxes are full. People are so busy. Nobody's paying attention to us as much as we think. The real challenge here is not exposure. It's obscurity. If we aren't crystal clear about what we want, what we need and what our goals are, like the world just keeps moving on. Like nobody knows how to use us in a healthy way, right? In ways that achieve our goals and use our strengths. And so that's why clarity, success loves clarity. And so three things you can do. If you don't know what you want, be clear about what you don't want. Sometimes it's easier to know what we don't want. So when we see it, we can go, mm, not that. The second thing is I want you to think like a plumber. So when you're making these asks, I want you to be crystal clear. Don't use flowery language. Don't dance around the issue. Just, you know, hoping that like they'll kind of figure it out what you're asking. Like ask like a plumber would put out a marketing ad that says, hey, this is your problem. This is how we'll solve it. This is how much it costs. Like it's just crystal clear language. It just tells them what they're going to get, tells them what the solution is and tells them time, energy, money, what that's going to cost. And then the third one is, is use contrasting statements. This is a great way to just be crystal clear about saying, Hey, here's what I am asking for, but here's what I'm not asking for. Here's what I do want. Um, but I actually, you know, in this, but I don't want that. Here's what I am saying. And here's what I'm not saying. That's just a great way to add just a little bit of layer onto, um, you know, exactly what you're asking for. So um, I'm curious, tell me in the comments or give me a harder like, have you figured out something that you are going to ask for this week? I hope you feel motivated, not only by my own story, that clarity works better than hustle, but my client stories that every time they've started to get crystal clear and to tell people about what they want, networks get activated, people go to work, the universe starts to have your back and all of a sudden things start to happen. So um, I encourage you to get crystal clear about something this week. Let me know if it goes well for you. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, drop the comments in the chat. I'll come back and answer them live or on replay. And I will see you all here again next Tuesday. Also, last thing, um, my book, Closing the Confidence Gap, boost your peace, your potential, and your paycheck is still due out here this fall, but there is going to be a way that you can get early access to it this summer. So make sure that you're on my um, list at closingtheconfidencegap.com forward slash book. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. And I will see you all next week.